Our bodies are made of lots of different types of cells, and from our fingers to our internal organs, these different specialized cell types are essential for the function of each of our organs. Now, as a developmental biologist, what I'm really interested in is understanding how you make those different types of cells and how, what causes their arrangement in the particular organizations we see within these tissues. Now, I'm particularly interested in the spinal cord, which is part of the central nervous system that contains the motor neurons and other nerve cells that allow us to control our muscle and coordinate things such as walking. Now, in embryos, the generation of these different types of nerve cells depends on an external signal called SHH, or hedgehog, which spreads through the developing spinal cord and forms a concentration gradient. Now, the cells respond to that gradient, the external gradient of hedgehog, by triggering the activity of a set of internal genes called transcription factors. Now, these transcription factors uh, form a network where they regulate one another, and this network of interacting transcription factors is essential for the development of the spinal cord. Now, what we did in this recent work was look at the relationship between the external signal hedgehog and those internal transcription factors. We started off by looking at how and when cells are responding to hedgehog, and we compared that to uh, when they trigger the activation of particular transcription factors. And it turns out that the gradient of hedgehog is important for triggering the right transcription factor at the right time in the right place, but it's not the whole story. And what's actually key to, to that correct pattern of transcription factor activity is the interaction between transcription factors, that network of interactions. Now, to really try and dissect that, to understand that, we focused on just three transcription factors. But even there, it was complicated. There's sets of um, cross-regulation and feedback between those three transcription factors. It made it very difficult for us to really understand what was going on. So, because of that complexity, we turned um, to, to some mathematicians led by Karen Page at, at University College London. And what they were able to do is to create a mathematical model that reconstructed that network of three transcription factors. Now, the real importance of that is what it allows us to do is to look in, in great detail at the activity, the um, function of those three transcription factors, isolated away from everything else that was going on in the cell. And what that allows us to show is that it's really those, that interaction, that network, that transcriptional network of three transcription factors, which was responsible for triggering the right cell identities in the right place during the development of the spinal cord. More than that, what it also allowed us to look at is to, to, to see what other properties, what, what else that transcription factor network could do. And what we found is that it, it, the, the, the mathematical model suggested that that network should make cells less susceptible to fluctuations in the external signal and also to maintain cell identity even if the external signal, even when hedgehog was decreased. And we were able to go on and then experimentally validate those mathematical predictions using experiments in embryos. And I think, overall, I think the, the, this study is interesting because it, it not only gives us some insight into the spinal cord, but I think it might be relevant for other tissues as well. So many tissues, probably all tissues in our body, uh, develop uh, using a combination of external signals and internal transcription factors. And I think the, the finding, our observation that in the spinal cord, this combination and the importance of that transcriptional network is what generates the right cell type in the right place may be relevant to other tissues as well. In addition, I think in a slightly larger perspective, uh, this might be relevant to one of the current challenges in the field of developmental biology. So what we and many others would like to be able to do is to uh, recapitulate, reconstruct the development of these tissues in the lab, in dishes, in so-called tissue engineering approaches. Now understanding the normal development of a tissue in an embryo may help us with the process of transferring that to tissue culture, to, to dishes in, 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 in the lab. And one would hope to be able to use these, not only to look at the normal development of tissues, but also to look at tissues uh, which are diseased or damaged in some way and try and understand what causes the problems in those tissues. And maybe one day this can be used to help repair those tissues.